Back to Lord's house. Beautiful days, bless us with. Bless us, Lord. It's nice waking up here in the birds church in the sunshine. Bless him, Lord. Yes. You know, been thinking about some things all week. Got a few thoughts here. And maybe short two point. But bless him, Lord. Uh, Jerry taught Wednesday <coughs> on perfect love, being perfect, and uh, just had to be here. It was good, um, and I read some more into that, and uh, been kind of studying it some. And over in Romans chapter chapter eight. Jerry, you might have read this Wednesday. I can't remember. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, starting verse 35. Bless you, Paul. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now right there, he, he gives a list that everything can't separate us from God. And that, that pretty much covers everything. Um, Talking about persecution and our trials, you know, all that, when we're going through that, God's just glorified in us. As long as we're following Him. And uh, brings us closer to Jesus. It really does. And it, especially when you get through it and look back. But out of all this here, nowhere do I see self. That is the only thing that can separate you from the love of God is yourself. And that's because you choose to let something come into your life. All this we have power over through Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, if you let sin come into your life, that separates us. Amen. Anything we do, that's not of God. It starts a little crack. And that's where the devil can get in work. But you know, all this, we have so much power through Christ. We can overcome it all. And uh, on up in that chapter, it talks about being carnally minded. And Jerry uh, read a little bit on that Wednesday, I'm pretty sure. And. Uh, that carnal-minded self is the only thing that can really bring us down. Uh, talks about being in the spirit, spirit being spirit-minded, spirit-filled, and that means keeping your yourself on the things of God, because uh, this this flesh is going to war with us every day. Uh, says I'm find it here. It says for to be carnally minded, verse six, is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is an enemy against God. 
or is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You know, this flesh, it's going to fail. Um, that's why it's so important to stay as spirit-minded as you can. And God will bless you with it. Uh, <coughs> that peace, that love that He talks about over here, the, all the things we can overcome through Christ. And uh, I thank Him for that. And He's really opened my eyes to things as far as looking at stuff spiritually instead of carnal-minded. And it takes a lot of, I don't know what the word to use, uh, dedication and uh, fear in the Lord to start looking at things like that. You know, what what the Lord can do if if I ain't spirit-minded and thankful this carnal mind. And uh, I was reading over in uh, Genesis. Try to tie this together the best I can. Maybe somebody will get something out of it. Um, you know, there's a there's more than just heaven as a reward for those that live for Christ, live for God, and. Uh, He'll take care of us. He'll give us the desires of our heart. And uh, over in Genesis 18, starting in verse 9, uh, you all know the story of Abraham and Sarah. And verse 9 says, And they said unto him, Where is thy wife? Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have, have a son. And uh, Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of, sure, of a surety bear a child which am old? And uh, verse 14 says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying that, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Um, at 14, is there anything too hard for the Lord? You go through this life depending on Him, and He'll bless you. Doing everything in order to uh, uplift His name. Uh, you know, Sarah here, and I'm sure that's us in a lot of cases, doubt the Lord as far as what He can do. Uh, you know, it, in her carnal mind, she's just being uh, sincere to it ain't going to happen, you know. I mean, it's just common sense. And uh, But she wasn't being spiritual minded as far as having faith in the Lord that He can do what He says. And uh, that's one of the rewards that even when we doubt Him, He still loves us. And uh, He wants to be a, a light in our life. And, uh, you know, I say that was a big testimony back in those days to the people. Because, you know, Sarah had been barren for so long. And uh, Abraham was talking to the Lord here, and what was kind of the whole picture there is the Lord come down and they communing with Abraham before he went to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, you go on down here, they, him and Abraham got done talking and it said, for I, 19, for I know him. Or, let me back up. 17, and the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? 
You know, that, that's saying something right there is the Lord's wondering what Abraham, you know, <coughs> he cares enough about Abraham to tell him what he's got going on. You know, he, and you read on down, and Lot is Abraham's nephew. And, uh, and I believe where Abraham went through here asking the Lord just to, you know, if they be 50 righteous, will you spare them? And the Lord said, yeah. And he goes on down through there, 45, 30, 20, and 10. And uh, the Lord, I believe, knew what Abraham was doing. Abraham was worried about Lot. He knew Lot was down in the morgue. <coughs> and uh, you know it down there at the end he said ten and he spared him for ten and the Lord said yeah I'll, I'll, I'll spare him and I believe he was doing this for Abraham's sake because he knew Abraham loved Lot and uh, so they go on down the men in the saw is it? I believe it's saw. And uh, they made up a lot. And they just read on down through there, and you know the men of the city try to take the men, sleep with them, do it. They won't have their way with them, you know. And a lot even tried to give them their daughters, and that just goes show how corrupt that city was and how filth and sin that just took over and uh, go on down there and Lot and his two daughters his wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt because she wanted to see what was happening in the place but three people were spared and uh, you know he said he'd save Spare the city for ten, but they wasn't even ten. You know, it the work today. The world's getting so filthy with sin, yes. and we all have loved ones that's lost. It's scary to think about how uh, time's drawing near, and uh, you pray, you pray, you pray for the ones you your loved ones and it seems like nothing ever happens and you start to lose hope a little bit. Let's go on over in Genesis 19 verse 29 it said it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. Abraham's faith and love of the Lord the Lord remembered that. And I believe he, he hears our prayers. I believe He remembers them. And uh, I ain't saying Lot was saved just because of Abraham. Because Lot was a, a decent man. I mean, but he was, he pitched his tent towards the morning. And that's a lot of us today. We, we got the right stuff, but we're looking far off in the wrong direction. But I like it said uh, God remembered Abraham and when it comes down to the end of time I believe the people that's living for the Lord and has prayed sincerely for their lost people I believe he'll give them a chance of repentance I believe it because he loves us and uh, I believe that's part of the reward, reward for that perfect love and uh, He's, I've seen him work in my life numerous times what he can do. And it takes walking that straight line to do it. I mean, he's blessed me in times when I, I didn't deserve it. More times than I didn't deserve. But when you really get on that straight and there and focus on the Lord and see the things, look through spiritual eyes and not carnal mindedness. It's amazing what God can do. And uh, I know this is all scattered and probably don't make a lick of sense. But 
uh, that really helped me Wednesday night. You know, I've struggled with that myself. Uh, it's just a blessing to, to read in here and study. He reveals things that I've never heard of or seen. And, you know, it's, it's amazing how good God is. That's all I've got. I know it ain't much, but I hope somebody got something out of it. I'd like to say something about Lot's wife. You know, she turned back and looked back into the Sodom and Gomorrah. She took the punishment for it. You know, they, there's not much wrote about it, but there's a lot in that. Uh, the, what we consider the church today is not God's church. The people that make up a church house ain't all right. And if you look in Lot's house, it had both of that. It had the righteous, and it also had someone playing righteous. Uh, Lot's wife, uh, I listened to the radio one day, and it, it really got me thinking about exactly what that was talking about. And uh, Lot's wife, she was in... Sodom and Gomorrah. She loved the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. She had her eyes blinded to the sin, and it just, uh, just like David talking about the smell of the scope. You know, you stay around it long enough and part of it, and it don't bother you no more. And uh, it don't really say much about Lot that I've read uh, recently to understand everything that went on uh, with Lot and them being in Sodom and Gomorrah. But, uh, you know, the church today we're supposed to be separated from the world mm -hmm. and from seeing what is going on with Lot he separated himself from Sodom and Gomorrah he loved the people in a godly way but now his wife she loved everything about that city and she didn't want to leave that city she loved that city and that lifestyle more than she loved God and if you look into the church houses today, that's exactly what's going on. And when God sent angels to save Lot and his family, it was sent for her too. But her love for that city costed her everything. And that's exactly what's going on in the church houses. When God comes by, or sends his son back to get the church and save us out of this mess, which is turning into pretty much Sodom and Gomorrah if you look at it, I, I, I hate to put a number on the church houses that's going to lose out because of the love for this world, for the love of the people that they love to hang out with in this world. And you know, like we was talking about the other night out in the parking lot, that uh, the friends that we used to have are not what we consider our friends today. Right. And I love them to death. I want to see them get right. I'd love to know how they're doing. But I don't want nothing to do with them. And if you look at Lot's wife, that's not what she was about. She could have loved the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and wanted something good for them, but she loved what was going on. She loved that lifestyle that she was living in. And uh, just think about what you're doing, what you love. You know, to be part of this world is enmity with God. I mean, that's a, a big separation for this world. And the... If you're trying to claim Christianity, you can't be of the world. You can't love the thing. That, I ain't saying you can't enjoy things that's in this world. Horseback riding for Dave and some of these people here, there's nothing wrong with it in itself. But uh, you take some of the things that you can get into, it will actually destroy your walk with God. <clears throat> trying to go hang out with your old friends. There ain't nothing wrong with seeing them out and being friendly and hoping the best for their life. But when you go hanging out with them, you're being part of the world just like Lot's wife was. She didn't make it because of that. She didn't make it because she was sinning and doing what they were doing. She may have been, I don't know, but I don't think she was. She just loved the lifestyle she was in. And that's the same way with the church house. If you don't separate yourself from the world, you're going to turn out just like, uh, just like Lot's wife. And I, I don't know if there's a significant thing about a pillar of salt. I'd have to get in and study, but you know they were burnt by fire. She was turned into a pillar, of, a pillar of salt, and I'm sure they something in that. But uh, to 
think of what you're teaching on right there the perfect love. She didn't have it. She, I mean, just like the world today, they use love so loosely. They love their parents, they love their children, they love their friends, but not a single one of them understands what love really is. To yeah. so have the love for God, it gives you a love for man to want to see them do right. Just like you talked one day a long time ago to set your treasures up in heaven. And I ain't never forgot that. And I fail at it every day to, to have a certain prayer for a certain person that's on my mind. Or to say something to a certain person in hopes that it sets treasures up in heaven. And you think of Lot. I don't know what he... Uh, I don't know the age of his daughters. I'm sure they were young, but I'd say they're probably in their teenage years. But he was willing to offer them up to the men of that city. And that was righteous what he was doing. It was trying to turn them from what they were at. Just like God, He will give you something to turn you from a sin. Something that you're trying to do. He's got something for you to get you out of that. And for them men in that city, Lot was offering his daughters something that was back to purity. To get out of the, the gaze and stuff like that, the, what they were doing. And you, you look at what Lot tried to do. He tried to give a situation for them to be out of sin. And they still wouldn't take it. Everything that he begged God for, to find ten at least, he couldn't even find a group of four or five men that was outside his house to give them two women. They wouldn't take it. And you, you look at that. This world is exactly like that. You could give them everything you own, everything you've got, and it wouldn't turn them from what they're after. It don't matter what you have. The world don't want it. And that, there's a lot in the story of Lot. And I would like to truly get a better understanding of the little details that are just said one time in that book. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of meaning in it, just like his wife. They don't speak a lot about her, but there's a lot in it. And I, I like what you told him this morning. You know, you said that she didn't have a perfect love. She did have a perfect love. I believe she didn't recognize the perfect love either. Yep. So perfect love in correlation to what King read is <coughs> part of what was separated from Christ. She, God, God loved them and was trying to get them out of there. She didn't recognize that perfect love and turned around on because of her because of her carnal mind <coughs> to look back on that seat and not the the I uh, think many people here this morning that don't recognize the perfect love of what Christ has done. That, that's a, if you could ever get a hold of what Christ has done for you, it will absolutely change your way of life. You won't, you won't just be a, you won't just be a cup of wires on Sunday and be done. You won't just be you won't just be this, uh, this uh, whatever the world thinks a Christian is. You'll, you'll be different because of that. That, that perfect love, if you think about what Christ done, if you think about this whole big claim God's God of creating us and then making us a place in heaven and then putting us on this earth to get through this earth from one point to the other. No, we can't make it. We've got to rely on Jesus Christ to make it there. You've got to accept Him and then therefore you become a new creature and all these things change. I ain't to say that I don't get a little carnal minded sometimes, but I guarantee one thing, it don't last long. Amen. I, I, and, and, and I, you know, I always think of uh, the story of Lord as far as Cody sort of hit on this and Kenny both that it. it picture it today, those, those are righteous people sitting in an evil place. I'm a righteous person sitting in an evil place being in this world. Man. You know. But but I, I, I recognize this love is going to get me out of here one of these days. Yeah. I accept Man. that love, that perfect love. And there's nothing can you ready? There's nothing that can separate me from the love of Christ except my sin. Except the sin I bring into my life, the sin I commit. It's all me, me, me. It ain't nothing to do with nobody in this building this morning but me. You cannot blame not feeling loved by Christ. And you can't blame your lack of faith, your uh, lack of anything in this Christian walk on anybody but yourself. 
The love of Christ is so powerful to get you from point A to point B in this walk that, it, that it's it's so simple, but it's our carnal mindedness that brings. That's why it's so easy for these youngins to get. And I know I always say stuff about the youngins, but that's the way God set it up. It's a simple, simple thought. Accept this love that this man gave you by dying for you and taking every sinful thing you've ever done or will do against an Almighty God. And He took it upon Himself and said, I'll take care of that. And all you've got to do is live your life for Him and accept this love that He's given you. You know, I, I was talking this week, we pretty good discussion this week on the job side. Uh, the first fruit of the Spirit is love. Amen. That's the reason why. It's because of that perfect love Christ gave us. I believe that's the first thing He'll give you along with everything else shortly behind it when the person gets saved is that love. I'll be a great growth. Testify about it a hundred times about His rage to leave me. It, 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 they sum up this love. And, and, and you, you start trying to mix the two, the love of the world with the love of Christ, and you, you'll get the mess like lots of white people. It, it's... Uh, I appreciate that. They, 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 they can't nothing separate what I've got. And the thing in this world is people. You know, I know we have to deal with people. We've got a job and all this stuff as far as being in this world. But they ain't nothing to separate what I've got. These things that's tried. These things that's probably come close to happen because of my fault. My, it's all my fault. When it comes right down to it, I, I, I've got something this world ain't got. I mean, they, they can't understand that you talk to people. They don't understand. You keep talking about starting to see, start see things spiritually. That's, that's part of your problem, too, a lot of people. They can't see this thing. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a real love. It ain't a love like a worldly love. It's a real love that Christ gave us. It's a real love that God had to get law out of Saul, too. But, uh, I thank God for that. I thank God for His love. Mm -hmm. See, according to the Word of God, the Bible says that it rained on the just and the unjust, for God <coughs> had no respect to them. <coughs> that meaning that God's love was just as pure and, yeah. and perfect when I was a lost sinner as it is while I'm a preacher. Amen. God's love does not change. Amen. There's nothing in this world that can separate you and God's love. God loves you no matter what you are, who you are, how you act, what you look like. That's God's love. Because God sent His Son to die on the cross of Calvary for all humanity. Yeah, Not the good people, for us wretched people, the ones that's lost and undone. The love of God hung him on the cross of Calvary, amen. And it wasn't the nails that held him there. Yeah. According yeah. to the word of yeah. God, he could have called amen. for a legion of angels. Yeah. And all he'd had to do was speak the word. And the angels would have come down out of glory and took the Son of God yeah. off the cross. Yeah. But you know what kept him there? It was the love that he had for you and me. Amen. amen. And there's nothing in this world that will separate you and God's love. But I want to read you some scripture, amen. Thanks so much coming to my mind. The Bible said over here in the 59th chapter of the book of Isaiah, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that He cannot save, neither is His ear heavy that He cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you that He will not hear. He said, Your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue with muttered perverseness. Amen? Listen to me today. The problem is sin. Unrepented sin in people's lives. We live in a day and time. Lies don't bother people. Bless him, Lord. It ain't nothing for people to sit in a church house with you every Sunday morning and amen everything you say and tell you a bald-faced lie right on Monday morning. Amen? And go right on like it's nothing. The Bible said not even a lie will enter into the kingdom of heaven. You need to read this. Now, I'm going to get to something. You said over there in the Word, amen, where He told him over there. He told him what He was going to do. God shared with the man what He was going to do, what was about to happen. That was in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ said, I call you to 
not a servant. For the servant knoweth not what his master doeth. Yeah. But he said, I call you friend. Because yeah. I've revealed it all to you. Amen. Yeah. I've let you know what's fixing to happen. Yeah. Now that's what the Word of God said. Old Lot went down there and he got caught up just like a bunch of people do. The Bible said when they were going to separate him and Abraham, amen, the Bible said Abraham told him, said you take away whichever part you want, I'll take the other side. He had the love of God about him. The Bible said that old Lot looked down to the Sodom, the valley of Sodom. Over there in the Bible said it was a well-watered plain. And it even looked so good to Lot that it looked like the Garden of Eden. Read the Word of God, amen. You know what will deceive you quicker than anything, church? Your eyes, amen. amen. The devil don't come to you with something ugly and two forked heads and a forked tongue. He'll come with you with lies. Amen. It'll soothe your flesh. He'll come with you with lies and make it look so good that you just want to sit down in it. But the Bible said when old Lot got down there, his soul was vexed with the sin of that city. You know what was the difference between Lot and his wife? Lot was troubled, amen. His soul was vexed because he couldn't fit in. Amen. Amen. There's another difference. <laughs> Talk about spirits. The Bible said to be carnal minded is dead. He said if you're carnal minded, you're new. You can't you can't be subject to the things of God. Neither indeed can be. That's the word of God. Most people can't see past the nose on their face. Did you know why this happened, old Lot? Because the Word of God was fixing to be fulfilled in the 17th chapter of the book of Luke in the New Testament. Amen. All the new, amen, theologians and all this say, throw this book away. Oh, in the old Bibles. You can't go to the old Bible. Amen. That's old Bible. It's old Bible. The old Bible was a school teacher to the New Testament. Yeah. Amen. The old Bible was a testament. It was a testimony to them. It was a coming. What happened to them that turned their back on God, that turned their eyes from God, amen, and did not keep God's commandments. Can I get an amen? God revealed it to us through the Spirit of God, amen. Oh, God, Brother King, shoot the things you've read. You see, Lot's story came about over the 17th chapter of the book of Luke. The Bible said it would be as it was when old Lot was carried out of Sodom. And the fire came and destroyed Sodom. Amen. It's just like that today. Amen. The homosexuals are running wild. Teaching God. our children. Amen. I know what you're talking about last night. Now in kindergarten, they're teaching our little children, the boys and the girls. Amen. And they can decide whether they want to be a girl or a boy. The Bible said in the 19th chapter of the book of Matthew, and I didn't know I was going to preach, but I might as well go ahead. He said, no, you not in the beginning that God made them male and female in the beginning you want to know why if you're born a girl praise God you're a girl if you're born a boy praise God you're a boy amen society is teaching perversion amen praise be unto God you want to teach your kids that you go ahead but praise God you leave me and my kids alone can I get an amen you go on and that ain't a hate Man, I'm just telling you, you believe what you want to. As for me and my house, we're going on the Glory! Glory! The Bible said in the 17th chapter of the book of Luke, he said it'd be as it was when Lot was carried out of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible said, Oh Lot, in the evening, you know what the evening represented, preacher? It represented the end of the day. This thing was about to end. You know where he found old Lot at? Hey Amen. Oh, over yonder at the gate of the city. And he's looking afar off. You know what the Bible said in the last days he'd be a doing? He'd be a crying out. God's children would be a crying out. Come quickly. The Lord Jesus. You know what they're looking for? Deliverance. Yeah. Amen. When old Lot saw them coming, 
The Bible said he ran out and fell down before him. He knew who he was. Amen. He recognized him. Can I get my God in? Is anybody getting what I'm talking about? He knew who they were. Amen. It did not take him by surprise. I watch people's face all the time. Amen. You ask my wife, she picks on me all the time. I like to watch people's face when the Holy Ghost moves. He scares people to death. That tells me, praise God, they ain't acquainted with the Spirit that I'm acquainted with. Can I get an amen? You can say, preacher, it don't scare me. Praise God, I'm telling you, I've seen some things scare you to death. Amen. That you wouldn't know how to take it. Praise God. And you know why people make excuses why they don't believe in the gifts of God and the Spirit moving like it's supposed to? Praise God, it's because they've got something in their life that they're hiding. They Bless him, Lord. Now I'm going to tell I'm going to try my best to hush. I didn't feel good this morning. Felt good all the last two days, but I didn't feel so good this morning. I feel so good now. I pray to God. Amen. 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 Hey man, let me tell you something. The whole lot was vexed. The Bible said his soul was vexed. And the Bible said, hey Amen, that praise God, he was sitting there eating, and at the end of the day, he's about to come to an end, brought the heart, hey Amen. Praise God, there's some things fixing to stop, hey Amen. Now the Bible said, hey Amen, that old lot, hey Amen, his soul was vexed, and when he seen him coming, he bid him to, to lay in his house, to sleep in his house, not to lay in the street that harm would come to him. Amen. But praise God. Amen. The Bible said that He told the men of that city camped around them. Did you know, praise God, the Bible said in the last days that the, Amen, that God and May God would come together for battle. Amen. And they'd come upon the breadth of the earth and camp around the saints for battle. And the Bible said that the fire would come out of heaven and consume them. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. I don't know about you. Everybody worried about the battle. The last battle. The last battle. I've read the end of the book and I'll be in. Amen. Anybody know what? preaching this morning. Amen. God was not a fair Lord, Lord, help us Jesus. Amen. And the only reason that God, amen, had Lot to offer up his little girls. Amen. Was because of the 17th chapter of the book of Luke. Amen. It had to come to pass to prove what Sodomite was. Yeah. Sodomites were homosexuals. Amen. You read the Word of God. Say, preacher, you're just saying that. I ain't saying nothing. And I ain't got a harm word to say about people that's harm of homosexuals. All I'm going to tell you is that they man until they get right with God. Amen. They'll die with the drugs and the dopamines. Amen. And the ungodly in this world and the wicked. Amen. You listen to me. Amen. We've seen it in our church. Amen. God saving homosexuals. Amen. And making new preachers. Can I get an amen? Anybody know I'm pulling it out of glory. Can't you hear me today? There's hope. There's hope. And there's hope. Amen. Come on. Bless him all. Woo! It ain't my fault. I'm going to lose track. My God, you don't even know what you opened up. I'm trying my best to be quiet. God's been stirring me all morning. Bless him, Lord. The men of that city didn't want a woman. They wanted the men. They were sodomites. Now get this and get it good. The Bible said that they were, the angel of the Lord struck them with blindness. They couldn't see. They, they couldn't find the door. The Bible said in the last days He'd turn them over to strong delusion that they would believe a lie and be damned. Amen. The Bible said these are they that had a form of godliness but denying the power thereof and such turn away. The Bible says for us to separate ourselves from these people. Amen. You can get back to me. You can do whatever you want to. But the Bible also said in the third chapter of the book of John down about the last verses, it said this, They that do evil 
Hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. Now everybody can say, I live like hell, but I'm a good person. You are a liar. Amen. Amen. The Bible said to call no man good. There's none good. Amen. Now listen. Amen. Dave Lyles ain't good. Kenny Firecloth ain't good. Mitchell Poe ain't good. Amen. None of you are good. Amen. In your own life. The Bible said our righteousness is filthy rags. Amen. Amen. But I'm here to tell you the righteousness of Christ Jesus yeah, is the white robes uh, that they're wearing in glory. Uh, it, oh my God, anybody know it ain't about me. Uh, it's about Him. Uh, amen. amen. Come on now. The reason the Word of God states it, amen, the Bible said that the seed of Christ cannot sin. If the seed of Christ has been planted in your soul, According to the Word of God, that's the reason He said a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. You may mess up in the flesh. Paul preached about it being contrary to the Spirit of God. There was a pin constant battle to keep his flesh under subjection. But praise God, He also told them in the Word of God, Greater is He that's within me than He that's in the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said he told them. The Lord told that I, Lot over there, my God, I'm about to fly. Bless him, Lord. But you know the fire can't come for the wife's soul is gone. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Fire and brimstone's gonna fall out of heaven. It's gonna burn this sun of the world up. It's gonna melt the permanent heat and elements thereof, according to the word of God. Amen. I don't care what people say. Amen. That's the Word of God. I can prove it by the Word of God. I'm still in the book, Keith. Amen. Amen. Now, listen. The Bible said, Amen. He told Lot that he couldn't destroy the city until he's all out. And praise God, when they were carried out of the city, the fire came and burnt the city up. Amen. That's the day that comes when the trumpet's going to sound. And the dead in Christ is going to raise the Amen. Amen. And then us it remains it's going to be called up in the air. It'll forever be with the Lord. And whenever Jesus blows, woo! When the announcement of the arrival of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords comes out of glory and it shakes the ground. Amen. The graves burst open and the saints begin to rise up. We're going to leave this old world. And you know what? We're going, Keith. We're going to meet him in the air. And whenever we meet in the air, fires are coming. Yeah. And what's left is going to be burnt up. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. There was not the whole There's a lot in it. Amen. My God, there's a lot in what you read. I'm, I'm just going to try to hush, Richard. Can't you see it? He's already told you what's coming. Amen. He said they, He said, if there's anything hid, it's hid to them, it's lost. Yes. He said, I've revealed unto thee all the hidden mysteries of my word, and people will read just enough of the book to justify their sin. Amen. But you're exactly right, young preacher. Yes. When the trumpet sounds, Self-righteousness is going to send more people to hell Amen. than anything in this world Amen. because they held on to the world, they're churchy, but they're still in the world. Amen. The Bible said, come ye out from among them and meet you a separated people. Get away from them. I tell people all the time, if you want to be a witness to your friends, separate yourself from them. Amen. Quit running with them. Quit having dinner with them. Quit having parties with them. Quit running around where they're doing what they're doing. If you want to win them over, let them come do what you're Amen. doing. Amen. Amen. Come on. If they want to get in with you and they love you that much, bring them to church on Sunday with you. Amen. Take them to revival with you. Have your meeting somewhere, praise God, and worship God. Amen. 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 You know, the Bible talks about not going in to eat with the lost. It says, "What well, invite them into your house, either. 
<laughs> you think about that, you know. I go eat with my brother-in-law. I can't go eat with my brother because I'm actually uh, saying that what he's doing is okay. And you think about that. You go in and sit down with the laws to have dinner with them. You're telling them that what they're doing is okay. See what God's talking about when He said, "When you go in and eat with the wicked," He's talking about taking, taking with the wicked deeds. It's not actually food, hey Amen. It's partaking. That's what the disciples thought when Christ went to get meat, hey Amen. Hey Amen. And He thought, he thought they thought going to get something to eat, but Jesus said, "The meat that I have is to do the will of the Father." Hey Amen. Come on. What we're eating is the Spirit of God, brother. It's not to be a partaker with the lost, amen. And the Bible said over, I believe it's in the book of Numbers, if I'm not badly fooled, amen. But the Bible said not to enter into the tents with the wicked and partake of the wicked things that they do unless you die with the wicked, amen. Now that's the Word of God. Come on. Praise God. Listen to me. Praise God. You're not supposed you be friendly you ain't supposed to be best friends with the world. Say, preacher, I, I don't get a hold of that stuff. Well, let me give you an example, okay? I'll use me. I ain't use nobody else. People get mad at me all the time. The Bible told me they'd hate me. Praise God, they do. But I want to let you in on something. Me and Tony... Praise God rode horses yesterday and we was excited. I, I, I was excited to even get on the horse. Ain't been on one so long and I thought, praise God. We took off this so hot we forgot our saddle bags or water or everything. <laughs> I told him about how he flipped on the mountain. I said, you know, if we'd been smarter, we'd have brought us a saddle bag full of water. Don't you listen? You see, years ago when I loaded my saddle bags down, it was four jars of white liquor. They ran. Here's fear. Here's the things of this world. You know what I cherish in my saddlebag now, Jim? I've got an old soul in the testament of King James. Yeah. I used to go ride the wagon train. Until they quit having the preacher got so good, Jeff. They quit even having to ride the wagon trains. But when they'd stop, and anybody that's ever rode horses with a drunk, I was drunk, okay? My horse was drunk, bro. It was drunk, bro. You could ride like mad to the next driveway and hit pull over. <laughs> that's a drunk horse. It, my God, I'm telling the truth. Anybody know what I'm talking about? A drunk horse won't run away with you. They'll pull over in every wide spot. I'm telling you the truth. Anybody know what I'm praying? Amen. Amen. My God. You see, that old horse I used to ride, ride Rob, when I was got saved, she was still broke by a drunk. She still pulled in never driveway. She pulled in never wide spot. Now let me tell you how God used you. They gave me a little soul in the testament when I first got saved. And in this little Bible, it tells every excuse that people make. Then it's got scripture to tell you how to get saved. I carried it to the covers, it's about to come off of it, Greg. I carried it in my side bike. I used to go ride the wagon trains and I'd go back and I'd ride to the places not to partake with the people I used to run with, but to give them a drink of something I had in my saddle bag. Amen. Amen. When they'd pull over and open up my white liquor, I'd pull in with my old walking horse mare and I'd open up my saddle bags and I'd tell them, I'd say something, if you think that's good stuff right there, you ought to have a drink of this. Amen. And I'd open up that soul in the testament, amen. And I began to read the scriptures, praise God. Woo. Now that old Mary can get away with. They'd run out and run me, but that old white horse God give me, Jeff Ashley. They didn't get away from him, did they, brother? He's riding down the river one day, Christian. Going down the river. I've been preaching them old boys and they got before they quit stopping at the white place. 
I'd run down the road and wait on them to the next to them. They wouldn't even stop. They just... And I was going down the road and I was just about ready to catch this fellow. I was close enough to hear what he was saying. That old white horse, if he wanted to catch you, you couldn't get away. He's anointed. But I'm going to tell you what a difference God will make in your life if you've really got it. And I was about to catch up with him. I've been preaching to him up the road, and he's trying to outrun me. And he was enticing another fellow that I know, and I was about to catch right up with him. And I heard him talk. And you know what he said? He said, Let me through. Let me through. I gotta get on down the road. They said, What's the matter? He said, That's a crazy preacher. And he's trying to catch up with me. That's a crazy preacher. Amen. Praise God, let me tell you something. They may call you crazy. They may call you a fanatic. They may call you all kinds of stuff. But when God saves their soul, they'll appreciate everything in life that they've done for you. Amen. Listen to me. The Bible's said to be a different person, a new creature. And I'm going to tell you right now, when people go to pushing you that you makes you feel uneasy, get away from that bunch. Amen. Get away from that bunch. Amen? When they make you feel like they're pushing you in the corner and you're already feeling ashamed of it before you ever do it, stay away from that bunch. Amen. I preached the message. Got in a lot of trouble on the right in this church. Had a lot of persecutions for almost two years. My family's threatened. My family's done. I've been through a whole lot of stuff. But this is I'm going to tell you again. When you're going to fight the battle of God, you better find you a ground to fight it on. And you better not walk into the devil's house to fight it. Amen. Amen. You better bring them before you got power. Come on. Amen. I might get in trouble for that, but I'm going to keep preaching, Kenny. I love you, brother, and I'm going to try my best to hug. Right? I hope and pray somebody got something. Yes, a blessing, Lord. Hey, man, if, if, if you would listen, if people just pay attention to what's read, there's key. The, did you know there's key words in what this boy read? Hey, man. And every time the key word comes, it's just like it opened the door and my God, there it was. The Scriptures begin to roll, brother. Do you know why? I'm, I'm, can I go back to this? I'm going to hush you. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Do you know why that God Almighty, God the Father, turned His back on Jesus Christ and Him hanging on the cross? It was because He couldn't look upon the sin. Are you hearing me? The only thing that will cause God to turn His face from you is your iniquity. Are you hearing me? Do you want to be in tune with God? And people tell me they still pray. They still live for God. God still hears them. God still communes with them. God still watches over And then will live the ungodliest life ever was. Now somebody has not just read the Scriptures that I just read to you. Can I ask you something this morning? I'm going to put you on the spot. <coughs> How many believe I'm still in the book? Amen. Amen. See your hands. Yeah. Do you believe I'm still in the Word of God? Amen. Amen. Read right out of the book. I don't know how people get that mixed up. I, I'm gonna, Kenny, I'm going to I, I love you. Praise God. You might have said you had a little, but you had more than what you ever thought about. Praise God. I'm telling you right now. It's time God's people take this thing serious. Huh? And quit running with the things of this world. Yeah. Quit partaking in the things of this world. Huh? Jerry said something one time about your little girl. You're just eating supper and you're just having a big time in this restaurant. You remember what she said? She said, well, everybody that's here is the people we go to church with. Yeah. If you'd be ashamed to take your preacher with you where you're going, you ought to be there. Amen. 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 And I'll give you this. All the water won't mix. Amen. Light and darkness 
won't be. It's right. 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 You, and, and people's got this love of God mixed up with fellowship and with the world. They say, preacher, I gotta be good to them, I gotta win them over. You'll never, I told a young man one time, you'll never win a drunk over drinking beer with you. Never. Never. I know what I'm talking about. See, I got to win one of the booth players over with I used to buy white liquor off of it. Huh? Amen. And it wasn't because I went back and bought white liquor. That wasn't the reason he come to Jesus. Come on. Have you changed? Or are you like Lot's wife? If the Lord was to appear this morning to take us out, would there be something holding you back in this world? He told them over our Jesus, he said not to get you tent to take the stage too deep because tomorrow. God's going to move you out here tomorrow. You better be ready. Right now, there's not a horse in my farm that would hold me back. There's not a thing in my life, keep growing, that would hold me back. Amen. If God sees fit to take me home, praise for God. I'm ready to go. I'll throw it all out there and scream hallelujah. And I'll shout right on into the glory. Say, preacher, you're great. I have sat with people. I've watched them die, Billy Joe. Sat and held their hands. Amen. Day after day and night after night, and suffering in the body. And all at once, peace come into the room. <laughs> and God lift them out of this world. Praise God. And He'd be so peaceful that you couldn't do nothing but shout. Praise God. I felt that one in my soul. And if I can encourage you, let me tell you something. You get in the Word of God and you'll see things, praise God, you would have never thought you'd ever see. And if you read the Word of God, you won't be deceived. Amen. You don't have to know what it means. Everything knows what it means, Brother Cody. But you need to know what it says. And then God will bring you the meaning whenever He brings it to your mind. I promise you that. There'll be little key words like Kenny was reading. It stirs me up. I, I just I love you, church. I pray to God that this church could come together and be a mighty army for God. Amen. Amen. You read the 37th chapter. Of this, I'm gonna hug. I, I'm gonna hug. There, I appreciate you. I appreciate Kenny. I appreciate everybody that's here this morning. But most of all, I appreciate God. Yeah. And I appreciate His Word. His Amen. Word. Amen. 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 Praise God, amen. I'm telling you right now, these things are fixing to come. Come on. And if God's people don't stand together, you moms and dads, I want you to listen. Over the book of Jeremiah, the Bible speaks about them taking their children, their young women, and their young men, and the enemy took them. And the Bible said that they took the young women and made them bake for him in his kitchen. And the young men run before his chariots. What do you want the devil to do in your children's life? Would you hand your baby over to a driver? Would you hand it over to a monster? Why in the world would you set your children up? This brother preached last night and I ain't got over it. Either. About setting your children up for failure. Amen. Why would you do that? Why would you give it to them? And then we get to the place they're not babies anymore and we're not rocking them. They're driving. They're young women, young men. They're driving. Then we get relaxed and we just let things go. My girls ain't perfect. Never have said they have been. But I can tell you what my girls have had. 
They've had a daddy that'll sit them down on the couch and preach to them the Word of God. And I've never compromised with you have. Not one time. And there's been a many situations in life, Jill, that that truth has brought you through. Amen. Amen. Delivered us when we didn't think we was going to make it. Praise God. And it wasn't nothing but the truth. I'm going to hug it, praise God. I feel so good. I can preach all day. I don't know about everybody here. I don't want you to come for this morning. I come to rejoice, praise Amen. God. Amen. I come to praise Him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I come to give Him honor and glory. Come into His gates with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Did you thank Him this morning? Has He done anything for you today? Did you get up with breath? Can you walk this morning? Did your legs work? Can you see out your eyes? Can you hear with your ears? Can you speak this morning? Amen. Did glory to God. Woo! Boy, I felt that, Sister Louise. Mm, I, I just, they so much come to my mind. I'm going to hug you. I, I love you. I appreciate you. Amen. Blessing, Lord. But do you remember that old song since I heard about it back home? Sing what you know, Lord. Amen. Blessing, Amen. Lord. If you don't know it all, just make it up as you go, praise God. You know <laughs> Amen. Since I've heard about a bitter home, I would leave this old world and all
coming a day
And there is a few youth t-shirts left from Bible school last year. If anybody's grown out of one or wants another one, you're welcome to get those. We need to get them all out of the way. Or if you have kids that you know can wear them, you're welcome to take them. Yeah. Birthdays and anniversaries. If we can't see you, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you.
많이 There are times in this life when fear is so heavy and burdens weigh on your mind. You Wait.
brother and sister market thing. They're a higher power, they can't be no heavenly ground. They're a higher power, so sing and shout it, walk it, talk it. They're a higher power, lay down your soul, cause Jesus is falling. They're a higher power, amen. 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 There are higher power. Amen. 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 There are higher power. Once I stood in the night. With my head bowed low In the darkness and black as could be And my heart felt alone And I cried, oh Lord, on high Your face Hold my hand all the way, every hour, every day, from here to the grave, I know, take my hand, let me stand. I may live in a palace so tall with great riches to call my own, but I don't know a thing in this whole than being alone. Hold my hand all the way every hour every day from here to the grave I'm now alone Take my Cody preached last night's been on my mind all night long. I woke up with it on my mind this morning. And I thought about a lot of things and I woke up with just a, a part of a verse of scripture on my mind and just kept flooding my soul. And, and I, I need to read you just a couple, three places in the Word of God and then I'll just get out of the way. I, I didn't, uh, it's been a good place to be. But I thought about a lot of things in the warfare that God spoke about what we're going to have to fight in this world that we live. Constant warfare. Paul preached about a constant warfare between good and evil, and he preached about the flesh and the spirit, how it was contrary one to the other, and there was a battle. There's always been a battle from the beginning of time. Christ fit the greatest battle on, Cal on Calvary's mountain and when He hung on the cross between good and evil and won the victory. Now I'm just going to... Shoot, my God. I, 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 the Bible said over in the Word of God, and I want you to turn with me. i got a couple of places here in the book of Psalms. I want to read just a few verses. Blessing, Lord. Over in the book of the Psalms 35 and then go to 91, verse, chapter 91 of Psalms. 
Now I want to just uh, stay and keep this. I, I'd like for somebody just to, to listen today. Somebody needs it. Help him, Lord. Now, we fight battles every day. Everybody spiritually, physically, we're going to get into warfare all the time. And there's something we need to understand and we need to know. And Cody said something last night that just triggered this in my mind and it just kept building all night long. And I went to sleep with it on my mind, got up this morning, and it just eaten me up. And I want to show you the difference in some things in the Word of God. And I want to show you what God said. It's good, Cody. I, I don't know if I can get it out or not. I, I don't know if I can even get what God showed me out or not. I've been all over the book this morning and I like it when God begins to put things in my mind, Cody. And I get in the Word of God and then this Scripture leads to this Scripture and then it leads to this Scripture and then the first thing you know, my God, you went off a deep end. Amen. But I know this morning that I've got victory. And I know how the devil fights. Amen. And I know how he works. Amen. The devil is just like everything else in life. He work, He uses the fear factor. If he can get you afraid, then he's got you whipped. Amen. That's the way the media rules the world. Me and Peace talked about this many a time. They keep the world, the United States, scared to death. Amen. They threw it all this gloom and boom and all this stuff on the TV. They got you scared to death. When they give out a storm that's coming to Ash County, amen, praise God, they'll give out 10 or 12 inches of snow and you might not get but a 2 inch snow. Amen. Nobody knows but God. But amen, they scare people to death and you can go to the grocery store. Now me and my wife, we don't get too excited. We've eaten taters before, amen. And right now, I can't have much bread anyway, so it don't make much difference to me. I ain't going to run for no bread and milk, amen, because milk's got too much sodium. Bread does too. So praise God, I can just eat a tater. It don't matter to me. But listen to me, praise God. Everybody panics. They'll give out a storm, and everybody panics. They'll run to the grocery store, and they'll buy up every loaf of bread. You'll see people that don't even like bread buy 10 or 12 loaves, amen, just in case. The power goes off. Amen. Well, praise God, what kind of faith is that? Can amen. I get an amen? Yeah. If the power goes off, I've still got light in my dwelling. Amen. And His name is Jesus. Come on. But I'm going to preach just a minute because I have got victory. But I'm going to tell you something. In the church houses of America, in the households of America, in the people's family of America, you know how the devils are fighting us and are fighting your family? It's through division. Amen. The Bible said a house divided cannot stand and it maketh it desolate. Can I get an amen? Anybody know what I'm preaching? Now, amen. When the church begins to flourish and to blossom out for God and the preachers begin to grow and the, and the, and the congregation begin to grow and get powerful in the power of God. You know what the devil will do? The devil will bring some forky tongue Baptist amen in to begin to whisper amen back and forth and and the next thing you know, he's got everybody mad at one another. Now you better listen to me because I've got a message to preach. The Bible said whisper and lift. Amen. Separate the cheapest of friends. I see it more and more and more. People get their feelings hurt when people go to talking behind their back. And don't tell me it don't hurt. Amen. I've heard enough of it. Praise God. It just drives me crazy, Rob. But I've got to the place now that I just like because I know that God's Word is true. Amen. Now listen to me today. If we would... Uh, the, uh, Lord God. Woo! This church came together scared to death. And you know when it was a few weeks back and you know what it was over? Your child. Amen. This church did not want your baby to die. This church did not want your baby to suffer, sister. Amen. Amen. Did you know what the Bible said? Amen. We're to carry one another's burdens. Amen. To the Lord, we're to help one another, support one another. We're to fight for one another. Not backbite and break down. The Bible said, Amen. There's six things that God hates. And the seventh is an abomination. And the abomination God spoke of in the house of God, Amen, was so in discord among the brethren. Can I get him? Somebody better hold on because I'm about to preach. Amen. Amen. You said something last night. You said it this morning. Amen. You 
to mention it this morning about the prayer that comes out of this church. Amen. Now I want you to know something that the devil knows. The devil knows there's a praying bunch of people in this church. If he gets your feelings hurt yeah. to keep you from coming to the house of God, to keep you mad at somebody in this church, praise God, he's got you whipped. Amen. Man, I get him. Amen. Amen. Somebody better holler, amen, because I'm on the right line. Amen. Praise God. I know what God showed me. Amen. And the Bible said a house the body cannot stand. It maketh it desolate. You know what desolate means? It means it dries up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But a house united. The devil can't handle people that will stand together and love one another. They used to say in the old Mountain Union Baptist at meeting time, if we can come together overlooking one another's faults for the good and not for evil, I'll let us say I. Everybody would say I and stand together. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Praise God if you come to the house of God this morning in the spirit of an almighty God and set together to worship overlooking one another's faults this morning. Amen for the good and not for the evil. Let's hear a shout out. Amen. Come on. Praise God. The Bible said for us if we can't forgive our brother his trespasses against us neither will God forgive you of yours. That's the truth. Come on. I'm telling you the truth. You know where the warfare is, brother? It's in our own home. The Bible said, amen, that our battles were in our own house. Amen, men and women, children, amen, now listen to me. And if a devil can get you mad at one another and in some smooth talking, amen, something come along and tell you how. And listen to me, ladies. Amen, praise God, somebody come along. You may be mad at your husband. He may be mad at you. You may be pounded up. Now don't tell me you don't because I've done a lot of pounding in my time. And I get an amen. Come on. Praise God. Amen. I found it's easier to pout than it is to fight. Can I get an amen? Hey, come on. Praise God. The little older in life you get, you learn to appreciate one another. Now let me tell you something about me. Hey, Amen. I've come to a place that it takes too much energy to fight and you lose too much. Hey, Amen. If you're mad at one another, that's a day you've lost. A loving one another and appreciating one another. You know what? the best part of my day is it's when everything stops and I can lay down beside the one I love and know she loves me amen regardless that I'm available to be and I get an amen that'll make you strong amen in your family now the devil don't like this preaching now I'm going to bless a minute and I ain't even got to the scripture I need to read this brother began to talk about the children and it's been adopted. How many really took it serious? It won't become serious until one of your children has been taken for the sex trafficking of this world. Then you'll understand what he was talking about. I want you to listen to me. How many's hearts was broken? We ought to get down to business and praise God, sister. Call on a God that we know that can intervene. Amen. And I get an amen. I believe God can find every child. I believe God can stop the amen the molesters. I believe He can stop the kidnappers. Can I get an amen? Because my God is Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know what's going to take you believe in God. Now I'm going to tell you, you can't pray if you've got an all to get somebody. Bless him, Lord. You can't help people if you've got an all to get somebody. Amen. And if you've been a whisper, and I'm going to give you some advice this morning. If you've been a whisper in this church, <coughs> bless him, Lord. I see it all the time, Cliff. Preacher, swear them down, they wouldn't talk about you good for nothing. Then you turn around and somebody out of the blues will tell you what they said about you. And they had no idea. Come on. It ain't too hard to figure out what a liar is. 
Huh? There's a lot of liars that stand in the pulpit every Sunday morning. Can I get an amen? They lie to the congregation and they lie to themselves. But this brother mentioned a praying for these children. I've seen miracles happen in this church. Right here's a baby that's a miracle. Right here's a baby that's a miracle. Right over there's a baby that's a miracle. Anybody knows a miracle? Right over yonder's another that's a miracle. Hey man, you know why I sent her? Hey man, Michelle, because this church prayed. And God let you conceive and for the baby that you needed. Can I get an amen? It's because somebody was in unity with God. It's because that was a day that this church was in one mind. And they were and they trusted God. Hallelujah. Hey. Stories has been told. Hey, amen. Hey, yeah. <laughs> If you've got problems with somebody, you set them aside, fix it! Amen. People don't appreciate what they've got. Did you know that? Not until it's gone. I've watched this and watched this and watched this. People and their families that separate. They get these good time Casanovas coming in. A ruby red lips, say, man, come on. Bless him, Lord. Tell everything that they want to hear. They're playing you like an idiot. Amen. Can I get an amen? Have you ever let the Lord God bless my family? Me. I'll tell this. Hey, little horse trader over in Elizabeth, in Tennessee. I love him with all my heart. Pray to God save you. And old Jeff Lyson, now I've traded with Jeff. Oh my God, now I'm telling you, it's going to get good, Jeff. I've traded with Jeff. Hey, man, and if you trade with Jeff Ice, you trade Jeff Slater, you don't trade. Hey, man, hey, man can I get an amen, Jeff? Am I right? Hey, man, old Jeff is going to trade with this fellow. Hey, man, I thought, now, praise God, this is going to be the worst, this is going to be the best trip I've ever seen. I said, I'm going with you. I want to see this. I've never seen nothing like it in my life. That old man told Jeff what he wanted for the horse hay tree. Jeff just reached over, praise God, put the, hey man, told him, said, here it is. Reached over, got the papers out of the old man's pocket, put him in. And he said, that's how I'm going to trade. That's the way it is. Hey man, I don't know if old man ever got the rest of that truck better or not, did he? Still laid up at your house. Can I get an amen? Come on. That's the way we ought to be with the devil. Huh? We ought to tell him this is the way it's going to be. Huh? Take it or leave it. Huh? I'm going to stand with Thomas. Huh? If he bad my spirit off. Huh? Can I get an amen? I'm going to love him. Huh? Amen until he gets it wrong. Huh? I'm going to believe huh? that God will deliver you till he does. Can I get anybody to know what I'm preaching? Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Say, I didn't want to say nothing, preacher. I didn't want to cause no trouble after you've done back by your brother and sister all over the house. Bless him, Lord. You see, you've done cause trouble. <laughs> you are the problem. I found that to stop you. Just shut up. Hey, man, it's simple. Keep your mouth shut. Amen. You don't have to tell everything you know. I tell my kids all the time, if you know something don't mean you have to blurt it out voluntarily and tell everything you know. Can I get an amen? Come on. Come on. You don't have to tell it. I'm going to preach just a minute. I got to preach this. This is for all of us. Now we're going to be a winner if we'll listen to what the Word of God says. What I got up in my mind this morning is I have got to win. Oh, the big and you know what come to my mind this morning? I was scared to death this morning that I told you wrong last night about a buckler. It's been a long time since I read about that. That stirred me so great that I was scared to death that I'd led my little brother wrong, amen, in the Word of God. So I got up early this morning, God flooded my soul. And you know what scripture was on my mind this morning? In the 91st Psalm, and he began to speak about that the Lord was my buckler and my shield. Hey, that's all I can think about. Can I preach just a minute? I'm going, I've got you on the right track if you'll listen to me. Hey man, everybody just talks this old junk. Hey man, praise God. Why don't we just quit being powders? Hey man, and fix this thing and let's go on for Jesus. Anybody wants your prayers answered? Is there anybody in this church? Hey man, we'd like to see God bless you and bless your family. Hey man, you women and men, would you like God to give you a greater love for one another? A greater appreciation for one another? Am I preaching to somebody? Well, what can't you have it? Hey man, can I get an amen? Come on! 
You can't have it bickering and fighting all the time. Amen. Amen. See, once, God, once the devil has got you separated and a division is drawn between you and him, he's got your family. And once he tires you and her apart, then you know what he's going to do? He's going to work on this beautiful young lady right here. Did you know that? I pray the best for these girls. I pray that God, and later on in life, don't you get married to you about 65. Amen. <laughs> Later on in life, amen. Now listen, amen. Then you get married for love, not lust. Can you get, come on now, amen. amen. Praise God. You get married for love, not lust. Then it will go, amen. He'll get you to whenever your husband's a dying, you hold his hand, amen. And if God forbid that something happened to you, the man that you give your life to, amen, will sit right there and hold your hand, change your diapers if need be, and love you and be faithful to you to the bitter end. You know what that is? That's the love that God has given an example of on the cross of Calvary. Anybody know what I'm preaching? Amen. Amen. The devil don't like this. I tell you that right now. But I'm going to preach. The Bible said over in Psalms, Amen. Over in the thirty-fifth, in the thirty-fifth verse, the thirty-fifth chapter, you pray, my God. Yes, hey, Amen. And then I want you to, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I didn't know how it was going to come about, but it's felt pretty good for so far. Hey, Amen. His brother said something last night. And he began to talk about the young people in this church. You know, I cried for you this morning. You know why? Because, praise God, you've got a burden on your heart and a zeal to see these youngins victorious and have victory. I'm going to preach this morning. My God, amen. If we would fight together instead of fighting against one another, what a victory we could have. Amen. amen. The one over yonder said if they'd all eat from a honey, what greater would have been the victory. Amen. Amen. The Bible said in Psalms 35, He said, Plead my case, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Amen. Said, Take hold, amen, of the shield and the buckler and stand up for me. He said, Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto, unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Over in the 91st Psalms, the Bible said, the Bible said, He that dwelleth in the secret place and of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. He said, Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the power and from the noise of the pestilence. He said, and he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth, amen, shall be thy shield and thy buckler. His truth, if there was shield and buckler, now I'm going to preach just a minute. Amen. I began to study. Amen. The difference between a shield and a buckler. I told you, right? Amen. It's a small shield, and they put their hand in, and they could carry. It was hand to hand combat. They had their sword, their knives. They didn't have no automatic weapons in the Word of God. They all they had was hand to hand, nose to nose with the enemy. Hey man, and when it comes down to one on one, they had a buckler, something light, and something that was sweet to be. Butler was light enough and small enough that they could carry it with them in everyday 
walk of life. Now I want you to get this. They could sit down and eat with it on. They could sit down, they could do the deeds of it on. They could work with their hands and still carry their buckler. Amen. But the shield was bigger, Thomas. The shield covered everything, amen. The shield that they carried, amen, was a great big thing. It was heavy. So when they sat down to eat, they had the proper shield up against the wall, amen. But they still had something to abide them through. The Bible said the truth of the Lord is our buckler and our shield. The truth will sit down and eat with you. The truth is our whenever y'all are saved. But now let me get down to business when we're fighting. Hey man, this church is in a battle. This church is under warfare. And it's under attack. Hey man, you know what the shields were for, Brother James? Hey man, in the old Bible, when they faced their enemy, thousands of them, and they felt like they were outnumbered. Jerry Gunman, come here a minute. Hey man, come here a minute, hey man. Come here a minute, Buck. I ain't going to hit you, pray God. Hang on here just a minute. Come right here, hey man. Them men of God would take on big shield, and they'd take harm to arm, and they'd bow down. Hold your shield up, men, and they'd hold. I'm just a jerk sometimes. Amen. 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 Amen.
let me tell you what happens. It leads to hurt feelings. The Bible said not to lay down on your ass. Make it right make it before you have to lay it down. Because it lasts. What are you willing to give up? Now listen to what I'm to say. Blessing, Lord. And I know people don't like this. They don't like no heel of They don't like heel of me whether you like it or not. I'm preaching you the truth. You see, I've got my buckler and my shield. I'm in the truth. Are you listening? Listen to me, women. Listen to me. The Bible speaks about a meat spirit. And if you fit for a week and you're still pounding, you don't have a meat spirit. You've got a fighting spirit. And you know where that fighting spirit comes from? The enemy. Amen. Huh? One time I went to, I've been in a lot of situations with Jim. A lot of situations. Some I put myself in, some I didn't ask for. But I got a call one evening, and there's a, there's a man and a woman, there's a, there's a bicker in the back and forth, they're fighting, getting ready to divorce. So, preacher, you got to come help us. Sit down and talk to us. Well, I, anybody who knows that's ever talked to me, Tony Elder, you know that all I'll give you is a Bible. Amen. When it hurts, it hurts. Amen. But you're going to have to get with it, okay? Yep. So, I took my Bible. And I sat there and they were going out inside. It was like two pit bulls. Back and forth, back and forth, back. And I'm just sitting there. I don't know why it's on my mind, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Aren't you ready? I sat there for 30 minutes and I listened to this girl. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. One wasn't about to give up, the other one neither. And they just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally I just said, just wait a minute. Stop. I said, I gotta ask you a question. When did this argument start? I got to think, oh, about six months ago. I said, six months ago. I said, what did you get mad over that caused this argument that lasted six months and gonna cost you your marriage? The wife looked at the husband with you. <laughs> hey man. She said, hey. I said, you mean to tell me that you've been a fight and fixing to split your marriage up for something you can't even remember? Are you listening to me? The devil moved in. Amen. That ain't the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is reconciliation. It's rebuilding. The Bible said that the Word of God is to edify and upbuild the kingdom of God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The Word of truth will bring life. Amen. Amen. Do you know what people get mad about? It's when you have to tell them you're at fault. It's always everybody else. But it's never me. I found out usually when my wife's mad at me, I have said something stupid. Amen. 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 You agree with that? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know it's the truth. I'm not going to stand here and tell you a lie. Huh? Come on. And these preachers will stand in the pulpit and say they've been married 50 years and never had a short word. I wonder about the long words they've had. Because yeah. <laughs> I've never seen nobody yet that but from the beginning to 50 years later didn't have some words somewhere. You know what you got to live and learn is how to get along. You know what the church needs to learn? It's how to humble yourself and be a servant to one another and help one another and be a church that God said that when the enemies come in and they try to tear our church apart that we get hand to hand, elbow to elbow. We've seen it, ain't we, Jerry? Praise God, we've seen it, ain't we? Well, what did we do? We went to Jesus. We got hand in hand, didn't we? Come on now! Amen. Amen. Then you can throw your shield up. Preacher, I don't believe it. I got one more place I want to read to you. 
You didn't know I was coming to watch you preach last night. My God, you told me. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> He's talking about praying for Keith and all these children in my high school. Burden for them. Amen. Fighting for me. And he made a statement. He said, surely to God that all the prayers that I have seen answered in this little church yeah. that we have got the power of God in our life yeah. that we can pray ahead around yeah. our children amen. and God take care of them. Amen. 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 Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that it's things right with you? You can't have it without unity. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You can't have it. Now, I don't know about you. I love this church. Amen. I love all these people. But now if you expect for me to compromise for you, you'll have to go somewhere else. Bless him. I'm being straight up. Straightforward. Don't want to hurt your feelings. But if you're expecting me to, to compromise and, and amen uh, for you, you better find your compromising preacher because I ain't to do it. I hurt my children's feelings. I hurt my grandchildren's feelings. I even hurt my wife's feelings. My mama knew I would not compromise. Can I get an amen? If I compromise for Cody, that means when Thomas does anything wrong, I got to compromise for Thomas. Can I get an amen? Can I preach? I'm going I'm to host. Right here in a minute. Hold on the Word of God. The very familiar Scripture. I want you to get a hold of this. Sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians. I will give you just a minute to, to find it. And then can I preach this to you? You were talking about last night when you was all going on one and God told you to go back and let you talk. Save in your boat. The devil runs right up in your face and ain't nobody else around. Speak the truth in you. There's no more who's to go in the park of fire. I ain't seen a long time now. One morning I went in, he had poor little Joe in the floor in the corner, and poor Joe was about to cry, and I don't know what he was saying to him, I don't know what he was doing to him, but he had that young man who got to pull all the pieces. And when I walk through, Jeff, I don't like people to, I don't like from the, to, to finger me out in the, in, the, in the congregation. I don't like them to point at me in the crowd and try to make an, an example out of me. I don't like it. I don't, I don't care whether you like me or not. I do not like that. I don't like to be put on the spot. Bless you, Lord. When I, walk, I was going to the office to pay some bills, and this boy... Come, he hollered me and he, and he started on me and I, all I said was I just I threw my hand up and I kept walking I said son I ain't always been a preacher me and I kept walking when I looked up he come around the aisle and he run nose to nose to me now I'm going to tell you right now years ago that would have got your nose broke don't run into my face I can't handle it Billy Joe I've always been a father. And don't you tell me it wouldn't make you mad. Now you're lying if you don't tell that. Don't say the house of God and lie. Amen. Because I know some of them. And this is what you see. He cussed me and he said, I've never knocked a preacher down, but you're going to be the first one. I just swallowed hard and backed up. I said, before you son. Let me give you some advice. By that time, the whole store was looking to see what I was going to do. <laughs> see, they don't know me that way. And I make people nervous anyway. See. And I just backed up and I told him, I said, let me give you a word of advice. The Bible said, for you not to lay your hands on His anointing, nor do His prophets no harm. And I said, there's the one. And I backed up another step. And Josh, I told him, I said, now, I can show you in the Word of God where God let one man of God wipe out a nation. One man of God. And I said, if you have to knock me down, go ahead. I can't stop you. But I won't be responsible for what happens to you 
next. Amen. And he backed up and he looked at me and he said, you are the craziest preacher I have ever met in my life. Let me give you some advice, congregation. God called me to preach, not to be your footwife. Amen. God didn't call me to be a pack view. He didn't call me to lay down and let you wipe your feet on me. Amen. Just because, amen, he said the meek would inherit the earth. Can I get an amen? amen? You still have a meek spirit and carry the buckler of the truth and the shield of the truth. Come on. I believe respect is earned. Amen. What long that boy started coming to revivals? What long did I see him had his, I didn't know him. Bless you. He hollered at me and said, Preacher, I, want, I need to talk to you. He said, I got saved. Amen. Been baptized. He said, We're going to have a new baby. He said, Why don't you come and eat supper with me and my wife one night? If I let him jump on me and beat me around like he's doing everybody else, he would still probably have been doing that. Are you listening to me, church? You don't have to like me. You don't have to like this church. Amen? I tell people all the time, all the new people that's coming, all the new faces that come in, I bet there's been 5,000 people come through this church and nobody has stayed yet. Amen. But listen to me. I tell everybody, Melissa. I told these young ones. Have I not told you? Sit back. Pay attention. See what I'm about. See what this church is about before you make your mind up whether you want to be a part of this mess or not. Can I get an amen? Come on. I'm telling you the truth. Because most people can't handle what's been preached today. Now I've got to preach this and I'm going to hug. I thought for sure this would be short and sweet, but it's sweet. The Bible said in the, in the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians, amen, this is what the Word of God said. Down about the tenth verse, He said this. Now I want you to listen, church. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, bless you, Lord. That you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What I've been preaching to you this morning, church, will get you to the place that you can stand yeah. no matter what comes amen. upon you. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Then the little stories that's been told, amen, won't tear our church apart. Anybody know what I'm preaching? Come on! He said to be strong in Jerry, if me and you hadn't have been rooted and grounded, we'd have been mad at one another. And one of us would have had to leave this church. Sarah, are you telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? Amen. The devil has tried to tire me apart. He started with Jerry. He's a trying to tire the deacons apart. He's going into the Sunday school classes of this church and trying to tire our teachers apart. Anybody, anybody can shout amen anytime you want to. You think the preacher's blind you crazy. I see more than you'll ever know I see. Can I get an amen? But I'm here to tell you a church that'll stand together and pray together. Ain't an old saying set. A family that prays together stays together. A church that'll stand together and pray together. Amen. You know, it's amazing to me, Mitchell, but things happen and people whisper and nobody wants to tell it out loud. How long is it going to hide until it tires the church apart? You see, I know how hard it is to keep things going and keep the work done and all the stuff that you've got to do, the teachers do, the deacons do, and everybody else does. And you know what happens when you get your feelings hurt? The first thing you want to do is quit. Well, nobody appreciates me. The devil's told me that more than one time, that I ought to quit and give this church up. Yeah. 
today. I don't know why appreciate you. I can call Mitchell a little night, hey man, out of 153 people. If the war fire really come into this church, it wouldn't be 10 that would stand with me. That's the way I feel. Bless him, Lord. Hey man, are you listening to me? You see, I'm bringing it out in the open. We need to get right with God. We need to get this thing straight. Or the devil's going to sit back in life and say, I tore Pleasant Chapel Church down. And they can't even pray. The brother began to read about a wall that was being built over there the other night. Hey, what? Woo, my God, I ain't got over that yet. Hey, man, did they come by? The enemy came by and said, if a fox come by and brush against it, it falls. Honey, I got news for you. When God's in it, you ain't going to tear it down. Can I get an amen? You know what? I finally had to tell the devil, I didn't ask to come to Pleasant Chapel Church. God chose me to stand in this pulpit before I was ever born, and I ain't gonna leave him till God says leave. Can I get an amen? Woo! I'm gonna preach with the Bible said, Amen. For we wrestle not against flesh. Now I want you to get a hold of this. Are you listening? <coughs> this is going to say it sounds science fiction, Keith, but it's the truth. Amen. Did you know people sitting right in this church don't believe in evil spirits? <laughs> Have you ever seen one? I see them every day. People got evil spirits in their life, and you know how I know? They're not living for God. Amen. Amen. Bless him, Lord. See, there's a fine line there where people mingle together and they all look alike. Amen. Am I still preaching? Amen. It's getting quiet though, ain't it? That's a blessing, Lord. The Bible said this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let me tell you something. It ain't the people that you're fighting against. It's the evil spirit that they've let take control of their life. Amen. Are you hearing me? Bless him, Lord. Not quiet, Do you know what the devil will have you to do? He'll have you to wonder about the fellow sitting beside of you. Amen. You thought I was going to say something about you, didn't you? That's what he'll do. Huh? That's what he'll do. You know what he's done in this church not long ago? Become one pity of tearing this church all to pieces. And you know why? Because we got worried about who wasn't doing their part and who wasn't coming when the meeting was going on and this and that. And it almost tore our church apart. Huh? I don't care if you come or not. Say, preacher, you're the meanest fellow I've seen. It don't matter to me if you come on Wednesday. I'm going to come and preach. It's okay. It don't matter if you make it to the business meeting. I'm going to come and preach. It don't matter. You see, I'm going to do my part. Then you can do your part. Amen? It don't, the Bible didn't say... Now let me just clarify this, okay? The Bible did not say, Sister Louie, that we had to be here every time the doors were open. Let's get that right. The Bible said a reasonable service. I'd rather you do whatever you want to than to come in and sit down and look at me like you're mad at me. Oh, come on. I don't like you want to see are you hearing me? But the devil almost took that one thing and tore this church apart. You say, preacher, he didn't do it. Don't you lie to me this morning. Bless him. Because I know for a fact, according to what God showed me, there's people sitting right here under the sound of my voice, got their feelings hurt. Huh? Come on, boy. You didn't know I was going to preach on that. I didn't need to, but it's pretty good. You see, what I need you to do is pick up that shield because they're going to start shooting at me. If you think this world likes this message, you got another thing to come. 
You think the devil likes you? You're crazy. Amen. Come on. If you think that all this loose stuff that's going on in the world is going to prosper you into getting your prayers answered, you better think twice. Amen. Come on. Blessing, Lord. Come on. It don't matter. It don't matter. Cody said something last night. It's always come to my mind from that one message. That, that thing that you was talking about, you didn't know if it was like anything or not. Good Lord. He said he finally figured out it wasn't Cody. It was God. Didn't have a thing to do with him that you had a job to do. You see, I've got a job. With or without you, I'm supposed to be a pastor in the Pleasant Chapel Church. It's my job to, amen, lift you up, Jody, that praise God that you would want to come to church. It's my job to lift you up that you would have a desire to pray for your children. It was, it was a Nathan and Alicia the other night, amen. It was them. It was this baby that was having her. What about this young What's going to happen, Mom and Dad, when she goes off to college and she ain't under your care no more? What are you going to do then, Thomas? This baby's going to need you. She's going to need somebody to hold the shield of truth up. The buckler, amen. And when the demons of hell come upon her, she's going to need somebody. She's going to need a church. Can I get an amen? She's going to need a church that can hold the shield up and quench the fiery dark of the wicked, amen. The Bible didn't say some of the daughters. Yeah, I mean. Did I read to you some of the daughters of the wicked? Sir. He said all. I mean. I, I got to read this. Bless him, Lord. So I believe I didn't ask for your permission this morning. You see, I'm preaching the book, Penny. When that cancer come into your life, sister, it hurt me as bad as it did keep. And you say, preacher, it couldn't have. It did. I got by myself and I cried because I didn't want to see her upset. She told me she had cancer to pray. Not this. Now I beg God. I see you talking about pleading. I begged him. I said, God, this is one of the soldiers you sent to help me. Please don't take her away. I need her to I need her. You need her. I need somebody that speaks the truth. Amen. Yeah. And pray to God, I can tell you right now, go over to Kenny Rourke's house and badmouth the preacher and see what you get. Amen. Yeah. Come on, pray to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know what she's got? She's got the sword and the buckler of the truth. And she will defend yeah. those that she loves. Anybody know what I'm preaching? People have let the devils come into their life and rule their families. I've got to preach this. Bless him, Lord. i got to preach this. I feel like I've done lost some of you. The Bible said this in the 13th verse, Wherefore, taking to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand an evil day, and having done all to stand... The Bible said, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Done told you. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be, now listen, ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Can I get an amen? And he said, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. And praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. Blessing, Lord. 
You know what persevere means? Blessing, Lord. Short version of the definition is this. No matter what the odds are. No matter what the obstructions are. That you've got your mind set that you're going to. <coughs> Amen. Come on. Huh? Are you persevering? You know the only way I can help Rex Darnell in hell is to persevere. No matter how this nerve problem feels, sister, we're going with Jesus. Hey Amen. In that hospital down there, in Charlotte Hospital, that morning when I prayed with you, there's a peace fell on me. And I don't know when, but God's going to deliver you. I believe that with all my heart. You say, preacher, she's walking on the cane. I don't care. She's a walking. She has pain. I don't care. She's a walking. Hey, did you hear what I said? Hey, man, there was a nod that you'd never get up out of that bed. Hey, man, Rex Darnell, the, death, the doctors even told her, hey, man, she could have been paralyzed and a laying in a bed, bed fast the rest of her life. You know what? We're going to persevere. No matter how much it hurts. No matter how much I stagger. No matter how much I came here. I'm going on for Jesus. I'm going to persevere to the end. Amen. Amen. When the hours come. Bless him, Lord. And when the fiery darts, and most of the time they come in words. I'm going to kneel down. I'm going to hold my shield. Are you nothing? Are you Cody? Are you Thomas? Amen. Are you Leah? That baby that's coming for little Sam, for little Matthew, for little Noah, amen. And for all these children, for little Keith over here, I'm going to hold the shield up for him. Amen? Are you listening to me, church? Are you a strong church? I'll give you something to think about. Are you a strong church? Blessing, Lord. Are you a strong church? Church. But then, I'd like for you to sing small as I am one more time. Listen to me, church. Every one of us sitting under the sound of my voice, including me, we've all made mistakes, we've all failed, we've come short. Lord in heaven, somewhere in life, we've all said something we only kept our mind. Why'd you pick me? Why you love me? You want to be one that can pray. Just Come on. My God, now listen. There's something happening this morning. Can you feel it? I'm talking about My God. He said it's true. Can't you feel it this morning? <laughs> oh, he loved us as small as we are. If you've got something of them Me wipes all my sins. Must be all my feet again. Yes, we sing the song every once in a while to guess. We'll make it. I used to sing an old song. It ain't my brother, it ain't my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. When you humble yourself before God, Amen. Humble means, Amen. You realize that you're the one that's Amen. You know what I want to be a part of? I want to be a part of something. Anybody in this church remember when the young man drove 500 miles that Sunday morning and the God told him, Amen, praise God, if he could get his wife and his brother-in-law to this altar, that there was people in the mountains of North Carolina 
that believe God and can pray. Hey, Amen. Did you know what happened on that altar? God healed his wife. God healed his brother-in-law. Drove another 500 miles back to this church for a testimony of what God done in his obedience. Hey, Amen. You know what I like to have, Jeff? I like to have that back. Hey, Amen. I'd like for God to send them back. Hey man, that we can pray. For Not that we're in his way. Oh, my faith again. Yes, he loves me. That we're in his way. Amen. That we are united. Amen. The Bible says if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. That didn't hardly come out the way I wanted it the message that I had in my mind this morning. But I would believe it come just like God wanted. Amen. Amen. Oh, that one little word. But you're going to spend some good stuff in that right there. Amen. Lay some good stuff in that right there. More than I ever got out this morning. But I want you to listen. Who's going to hold the shield of the truth over this thing? Louise told me one time, I was afraid of it on charge of myself. Now I thank God for my family. My girls know I love them with all my heart. Louise said, Don't you realize that God chose you to be these girls' daddy? Not anybody else in this world. He chose me to be their girls' daddy. And it's an honor. And you know what? You know who God chose to be this little baby spirit? Me. Amen. This is mine. This is my grandbaby. Who's going to hold that shield over her? That the fiery daughter. Amen. That the devil is shooting at our children this day and time. Amen. Praise God. Who's going to hold the spirit of truth over her? Until I leave here, I'm going to. And there ain't nobody going to tell this beautiful little girl that she's a boy. Amen. You can get mad at me. You can get me threatening phone calls. You can do whatever you want to. But leave my family alone. Amen. I love you. I love you. And I'm fighting a battle for you. Amen, Jerry. I love Jerry more than I ever loved him. You say, Jerry, my God, I'm telling you right now. I love you people. Don't you know that? Amen. I love you people. I thank God for what you preach last night. Nobody else heard anything. You got me. God. Amen. Amen. I can see him fighting back. You see that shield that they wore in, in the battles of life and they faced their enemies unnumerable. It was for covering. Study. It was for covering. It was to hide behind. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It was to hide behind. But that book. And you just nose to hand to hand comment with the end. You still have the cover. Walk the way. Thank God for you, brother. I love you. And you know what it is? The truth. Did you know the truth hurt? Amen. Get you a song. We're going to fellowship. I don't know about everybody else, but praise God, I feel like I have been to church. Amen. Amen. Amen.